السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ My dear students Today we will learn about what is beauty Unit 13 Lesson 1 From today's lesson we will be able to learn Why can we discover beauty? When do we run into difficulty? Why is it difficult to define beauty? How do people discover beauty? Who is John Keats? When does an unpleasant truth become beautiful? Let's start our lesson and we try to analyze our lesson. Beauty is easy to appreciate. Beauty is easy to appreciate but difficult to define. It is easy to appreciate beauty but difficult to define. We can praise beauty but we run into difficulty when we want to give definition, when we want to define beauty. As we look around, as we look around, we discover beauty in pleasurable objects and sights. If we look around us, if we see that we can find beauty in pleasurable objects and sights in nature, when we see beautiful things, nice things, we can say it's beauty. If we see a child laughing, suddenly we see, oh, it's nice. And we find beauty in the kindness of strangers. When some unknown people help us, we feel very happy at her. But if we are asked to give the definition of beauty, we run into difficulties because it is very hard to give the definition of beauty. Does beauty have an independent objective identity? People ask if beauty has an independent objective identity, if there is an identity of beauty by which we can know that it is beauty, is it universal or independent on our sense perception? There is a question, is it universal? Is beauty same for the people all over the world? Is beauty same to all the people all over the world? No, no, no. It doesn't become. So is it universal or is it dependent on our sense perception? If it depends on our sense perception, that is, it depends on our sight, there is a question. Does it, in the, does it lie in the eye? Of beholder that is what is the meaning of behold the meaning of behold is to see the beholder the meaning of behold is to see so beholder meaning the one who sees a further difficulty arises when beauty manifests itself not only by its presence but by its absence as well There is more difficulty. We also find beauty in its absence also. Sometimes we feel very bad or sometimes we become sad. Then we remember our past happiness and we feel happy. That is we feel beauty from our past thought. We go to our first life and we feel happy. 
that is the things those days are not present but when we are sad we remember those happy days and we find ourselves happy that is this is also beauty so beauty may manifest itself in its absence also so we cannot say that beauty only external beauty or if you don't see with our own eyes we cannot say that it's not beautiful even if the things are not present here we can see it with our insight eyes with the eyes of our heart we can see and we can feel as when we are repulsed by ugliness and desert beauty when we become sad when we become sad then we desire beauty and we go to our past lives happy moments and try to be happy but when but then ugliness has much place in our lives as beauty ugliness has as much a place in our lives as beauty ugliness the things we are not beautiful the things we doesn't give we uh, which does not give us happiness and which don't make us happy is also important in our life as the things which give us happy is also important in our life but we cannot ignore the things which are not beautiful but it is also part of our life maybe more sometimes unpleasant things may be a greater part of our life as when there is widespread hunger and injustice in a society in the society there is widespread hunger and injustice philosophers have told us philosophers have told us that beauty is important part of life beauty is an important part of life but isn't ugliness a part of life too beauty is an important part of our our life in the same way ugliness is also a part of our life because we cannot ignore ugliness we cannot sometimes we cannot avoid ugliness there are so many things there are truth about our life so we cannot avoid them and if art has beauty as an important ingredient ingredient the meaning of ingredient is element beauty as an important ingredient can it confine itself only to a possession of beauty art what is art is related to two things so art is related to beauty so can art only is related to beauty isn't it related to ugliness also when the poets and writers write if they only write the beautiful things and they ignore unpleasant things of our life but they may be true so it will remain incomplete the art will remain incomplete so beauty is an important part of art in the same way ugliness is also an important part of life can art ignore what is not beautiful cannot ignore what is not beautiful no 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 art cannot ignore what is not beautiful sometimes what is not beautiful but it may be true about our life we come to next paper poets and artists have provided an answer poets and artists 
have provided an answer by incorporating them both into their works. Poets and artists, they have incorporated, incorporated both of them into their works, both beauty and ugliness. They have met them together, they have joined them together, they have discussed them together. In doing so, they have often tied beauty. They have often tied beauty to truth and justice. So that what is not beautiful assumes a tolerable proportion as something that represents some truth about life. They have tied them. They have tied them to truth and justice. That is the things. There are some things which are not beautiful. But it represents our life. It represents our life. That is, it gives a good message about our life. It gives a good message about our life. It gives a true things about our life. It explores the real things of our life. There are so many things that are not happy. Happy things, they are not happy moments, but those are related to our life. Those are related to our life, so we cannot forget them. Okay, next we come. John Keats, the romantic poet, wrote in his celebrated Odd on a Grecian Arm. Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. By which he means that truth, even if it is not pleasant, becomes beautiful at a higher level. That is, beauty is truth, truth is beauty. The thing which is beauty is true. A beautiful things must be true. And the true things must be beautiful. A thing which is beauty full should be true and the things which are true should be beautiful. It may be bad side of our life or it you may not like it but if it is a real part of our life or if it is related to our life, if we cannot ignore them then it is part of our life, it is also beautiful. Suppose you have children, you have brother, you have sister. It is general that they will disturb you. You feel that it's not beautiful, but it's part of our life, so you cannot ignore them. So this thing is true, that you have to tolerate the disturbance from your brother, from your sister. So these things are part of your life, so this is, these are also beautiful things that is your father will disturb you your younger father will disturb you is small children at home they are the beauty of our home but they also disturb disturb us they disturb the parents and these disturbances are beauty beauties so similarly what is beautiful forever remains too what is beautiful here I am reading what is beautiful forever remains true. A beautiful thing is always true because there are so many things about life those are true. If those are true so they are beautiful. Another meaning in the context of the 
Gaussian and earth object is that truth is a condition of earth. Truth is a condition of earth. That is when we when we talk about art. So we need to remember that truth is the condition of art. If we make art, there must be truth in it. Because art is about life. Art is about life. Now we come to the questions. Why can we discover beauty from? To answer this question, you need to read the passage and you need to find where the words of the question matches. Where the word of the question matches, we need to find. Where can we discover beauty from? So we need to go to the passage here. Beauty is easy to appreciate but difficult to define. We can discover beauty. Here we have got, we have, we can, we discover beauty in pleasurable objects and sites. Now we need to see what is in the question. In the question, where can we discover beauty from? That is, can is used. Here subject is we. So you need to start the question from the, you need to start the answer from question. First we will write we, then we will write can. We can discover beauty from, then you write from here, in pleasurable objects and sites in nature. Okay, you got the answer. Then we come to the next question. When do we run into difficulty? So find the words in the question suddenly will match in the passage. We try to find in the passage run into difficulty or we try to find difficulty. Then we will find the answer. Just go to the passage. Here we run into difficulties. Have you got? We run into difficulties. When but asked to define, when people asked to give the definition of beauty, we run into difficulties. Then go to the question number C. Why is it difficult to define beauty? Why is it difficult to define beauty? Oh, you will certainly find the answer when you find difficulty. Around this word, the answer is in the passage. The question word and passage word should matches and around them the answer should be. We go to the passage. Why is it difficult to define beauty? It is difficult to define beauty because a further difficulty arises, you see, when beauty manifests itself not only by its presence but by its absence as well, does it lie in the eye of the beholder? Is it universal or is it dependent? There is a question, there is a question. Many people think it in many ways. Some people ask, is it universal or is it dependent on our sense perception? Or does it have an independent identity? Identity, like this, there are many questions about beauty. So it is very difficult to define beauty. Question D. How do people discover beauty? How do people discover beauty? Okay, you can answer it. People can discover beauty from objects around them. From objects around them, from beautiful sites around them. Okay, then question E. Who is John Keats? We have read it from the passage. John Keats is a romantic poet. John Keats is a romantic poet. Number eight. We go to number eight. When does an unpleasant truth becomes beautiful? When does an unpleasant truth becomes beautiful? 
an unpleasant truth becomes beautiful at a higher level i have written it the answer certainly you will find it in the passage there is at higher level it may be beautiful unpleasant things also become beautiful because it represents about life at a higher level so this way you will try to answer the question if you can understand the passage well and if you read the questions properly you can answer properly okay inshallah next class we will see again next till next we hope you healthy and safe at home assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh